In this video, I am going to teach you how to 3D carve with a Dremel or any type of rotary tool. The skills and techniques that you will learn in this video are very useful and you will be able to apply this to any type of wood carving that you do. So hit the subscribe button and come hang out with me for a little bit. I'm going to teach you guys how to 3D wood carve this Spartan helmet. I am using cedar to carve on because I absolutely love the rich tones that this wood has, especially when you add some oil to it. Today's image that I'm carving, I made it into a template and I put it into a template pack. And what you can do, you can print them off, print them off to any size you want. You can wood carve them, wood burn them. So if you would like to follow along, you can find this download in the links below. I think it is a great value for what you get. I'm going to be using more than one tool to wood carve this with just to show you guys that you can use any type of rotary tool. The first one I'm using is the Fordham SR series. Now I love this because it has a foot control pedal and multiple hand pieces that you can use. The next tool I'm using is the Dremel 3000 with a flex shaft. And after that, I am using the Marathon 3 micro motor. This is fantastic for fine detail work. And you guys knew I couldn't leave out the Dremel stylo. We want to take the proper safety measures, so get you guys a good desk mask, as well as some fog-proof safety glasses. And for hearing protection, I'm using a pair of headphones so I can listen to podcasts and focus. I am using a dust collection machine, which is the DC725 by PSI Woodworking. I will have all these links below. The first wood carving burr or bit we are going to use is the inverted cone burr from DuraGrit. Now we want to start out by carving the outer edges. This is super simple guys. Anyone can do this. It's easy. Just trace the outer edges of the design. Keep a moderate pressure, but keep it under control because this has a tendency to run away from you since it is actually cutting in the wood. Now after I traced everything, I'm going back over it again to get a little bit more depth. The next burr that we are using is the conical tip burr from DuraGrip. This is fantastic for cutting away the bevels that we just made. So just go on the outer edges right here and lay those bevels down. This pointed tip makes it great for getting inside hard to reach places. Okay, listen up guys, take a special note. Do you see how I am carving the right side of the helmet here? I'm just slightly curving that because I want it to be three dimensional. I'm gonna be doing this process a lot so we wanna maintain the correct curvature. Now I'm using a round end carbide taper burr. The DuraGrip wasn't cutting as deep as I needed it to be, so I switched to this burr right here. Now I am hogging out a lot of wood because I didn't get my measurements right the first time around. So I'm just gonna go around the image again at the lower part and really add a lot of depth to this. Take note of how I'm rounding the right side of the helmet in. I really want that thing to curve. So each amount of depth that we go down, we gotta round that off. Just as we rounded off the right side of the helmet, we want to round off the left side. And after we do this, we have to pencil our marks back in because we just lost our detail. Now there's probably an easier way to do this, but this is my first time doing this carving, so I'm gonna take it easy on myself, and you should too. I switched back to the inverted cone burr here so I could add the detail back to the eyes. 
as well as just clean up around the edges of the design to maintain the sharp edges. Now we are using the sanding drum from Dura Grit to carve the left side of the image where the hair is at to maintain the three dimensional look. We are also going to go around the edges with this just to get a little bit more depth. Now I'm going to take some sandpaper and just go over everything and clean it up to see my detail. It's not looking that bad now but we need to remove more background. The more of the helmet we carve, the more background we have to remove. So it's just a process of repeating here. Here's a secret of mine, guys. When you power carve, the background gets messy. So use the inverted cone burr, turn it on its head, and lightly carve the background. This will clean everything up. I'm also going to use this to go back over my lines and make everything nice and straight. Be sure at this point to mark in the crest line which holds the hair for the helmet. I'm carving the front of the hair and crest at an angle to somewhat match up the curvature of the helmet to maintain the three-dimensional look. I'm using the sanding drum to carve the crest out which houses the hair and I'm just going around the image just to get some fine detail in there and clean up my edges. This is turning out super nice. Now we are going to be using a tool called a riffler file. And we're gonna just go along the edges inside the eyes and really sharpen up those lines. Let's texture in some hair now. I am using the Marathon 3 micro motor with a diamond inverted cone burr. I'm just simply turning the inverted cone burr on its side and making short and long strokes, all in random patterns. I'm going to repeat this two to three times, and on the third time, I'm really gonna dig in and give it a little bit of depth, but not too much. You'll get to feel for this as you begin to do it. And this technique is also used to add fur to animal carvings. I'm also adding a few deep areas here to give the hair some character. This is turning out pretty great considering this was my first time carving this. Now we are going to add in the flourishes and designs. So I am going to take a mechanical pencil. Now I forgot the lead size on here, but I made sure my lead's real small that way I can get in these tight areas. And I'm just thickening up the pencil marks here as I go along. To carve the flourishes, we are using two round carbide burrs. One is bigger than the other. The bigger is for the larger part of the flourish and the smaller one is of course for the smaller part. The secret here is just to keep steady hands and try to keep everything at a nice, consistent depth. And I'm gonna make about probably three to four passes on these flourishes right here to smooth everything out. If you guys would like to help me out here, be sure to hit the thumbs up. It helps me more than you know. Thank you guys so much.
For the next step, I am using a bristle disc with the Dremel Stylo. A bristle disc is used to clean up finer detail areas, such as the hair texturing here. I'm just going to just go all over the image here and really get in the fine detail areas and clean them up. This removes the small fuzzies and the micro burrs that occur from using carbide rotary bits. Here comes my favorite part. We are going to coat this with some teak oil. Yes, I did make a little bit of a mess here, but no worries, I'll clean it up. And now you can see the rich color of this wood starting to come out. Don't you guys love the rich color of the cedar? This may be my new favorite wood to carve. Now that this is dry, I am going to be using some clear satin poly acrylic. Now you don't have to do this. I just wanted to shine this up just a tad bit more than what it is. Since this is water-based, it's pretty milky looking, but it will dry pretty clear. I'm going to let this dry for a while and put on around two more coats. It's time for the moment of truth. Are you guys ready? I put two more coats on here. Let's look at it. Oh yeah, I think this turned out pretty great. Now it's not perfect, I made a lot of mistakes, but you know, perfection is not something that we need to seek after. We need to seek after excellence. Being perfect all the time, well, that would be boring. We would have nothing to work on, right? Don't forget to pick up your Spartan wood carving template bundle. I will leave a link below. This comes with 12 different images, including the original one that you saw here. I had my graphic designer make this for us, and you can practice all the techniques you have just learned in this video. You can pick it up in the links below. Uh, you can resize this to any size you want and wood carve it, wood burn it, whatever the heck you want to do with it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and be sure to leave me a thumbs up, and if you haven't, Hit that subscribe button. That would mean a lot to me. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you next time around.